This is the Sabbath School lesson for the third quarter, 2020. Lesson 2 for July 4 to 10, ready for teaching on July 11. Winsome Witnesses, the Power of Personal Testimony, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Thursday, July 9, the Power of a Personal Testimony. Let's look again at Paul before Agrippa. The Apostle Paul stands before this man, the last in the line of Jewish kings, the Maccabees, and of the house of Herod. Agrippa professed to be a Jew, but at heart he was a Roman. There are comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 436, if you have access to that. The aged apostle, weary from his missionary journeys and battle-scarred in the conflict between good and evil, stands there, his heart filled with God's love and his face radiant with God's goodness. Whatever has happened in his life, whatever persecutions and difficulties he has experienced, he can declare that God is good. Agrippa is cynical, sceptical, hardened, and really indifferent to any genuine value system. In contrast, Paul is filled with faith, committed to the truth, and stalwart in defence of righteousness. The contrast between the two men could not be much more evident. At this trial, Paul requests to speak and receives permission from Agrippa. Question. Read Acts chapter 26, verses 1 to 32. How does Paul witness to Agrippa? What can we learn from his words? Acts 26, beginning at verse 1. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things which I am accused by the Jews, especially because you are expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation in Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first. If they were willing to testify that, according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise our twelve tribes, earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and, when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities." While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen, and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people, as well as from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes, in order to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. 
Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand, witnessing both to small and great, saying no other thing that than these which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead, and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now, as he thus made his defence, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king, whom I also speak freely, knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention, since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today, might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. When he had said these things, the king stood up, as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with them, and when they had gone aside, they talked among themselves, saying, This man is doing nothing deserving of death or chains. Then Agrippa said to Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Kindness opens hearts where abrasiveness closes them. Paul is incredibly gracious to Agrippa here. He calls him an expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. That's in verse 3. He then launches into a discussion of his conversion. Question. Read Paul's conversion story in Acts 26, 12 to 18, and then carefully notice its effect on Agrippa in verses 26 to 28. Why do you think Agrippa reacted the way he did? What impressed him about Paul's testimony? Verses 12 to 18. While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, At midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people, as well as from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes, in order to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And then Agrippa's response, beginning in verse 26. For the king before whom I also speak freely, knows these things, for I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention, since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You almost persuade me to become a Christian. Paul's testimony on how Jesus changed his life had a powerful impact on a godless king. There is no witness as effective as a changed life. The witness of a life genuinely converted has an amazing influence on others. Even godless kings are moved by lives transformed by grace. Even if we don't have as dramatic a story as Paul, we all should be able to tell others about what it means to know Jesus and to be redeemed by his blood. Hi there. Thanks for watching this video on the Advent Band Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever we upload new videos. So, until we meet him in the clouds, may God continue to bless you.
This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind and Hearing Impaired, Christian Record Services for the Blind, the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel. You can also listen on the official Sabbath School 4 app and the Apple iTunes app, Sabbath School with Percy Harold. Remember, God is always faithful.